Kun. Anand, welcome. I understand you're in Bangalore and I understand you're speaking to me from a Starbucks outlet having a good cup of coffee. How are you? Certainly, certainly, sir. I'm, I'm all good, sir. And thank you for having me here, sir. Oh, welcome anytime. And it's a pleasure to talk with you. Everyone knows Anand is one of my upcoming, uh, you know, scholars who's much into Middle East and Afghanistan and this area around. So, Anand, yeah. before we get into Afghanistan, I'd like to discuss the aftermath. What next in uh, this, you know, spat between Israel and Iran? Uh, yeah. Okay, before, all right, we'll spend about 10 15 minutes on that and then move ahead. Right, yeah. you know the situation yeah. where it is. So, the first yeah. question which uh, uh, you know, I'd like to ask you, and we'll build on that, is Sure. What are uh, Iran's options going for? Where does Iran stand in this whole affair now? Uh, so to be very, to be to be to be very honest, it was I wasn't. I'm one of those scholars who are uh, have been viewing Tehran from a very long time. I've been not only from the perspective of Afghanistan, but also from the perspective of uh, its its greater aspirations in the Middle East. Now, sir, uh, I found Tehran to be at the crossroads again. Now, Tehran has lost a vital strategic asset in Brigadier General Zahidi, uh, which is a blow to its regional prestige. Now, you would remember, sir, um, it's from the first time that Tehran is here. We saw uh, the killing of Qasim Soleimani in 2020. All eyes were on Tehran. How is it going to respond? Um, and we all had our apprehensions. We all had our uh, I would say um, we, there was a little tension uh, even within uh, different uh, military uh, establishments. What is going to, you know, what is Tehran going to do? Um, and so uh, the, the question that all military analysts and scholars uh, had in mind, whether Tehran would still retain its aspirations, whether this tarnishes its image, in, it loses its regional dominance in some way or the other, or it will continue to retain some level of pragmatism and avoid an, a, a full-scale conflict. So in this case, you wouldn't, you would, we, we all didn't see Tehran doing so in a way that we expected. Now, after playing a shadow war through proxies like Hezbollah, Iran, as you all know, did launch a direct attack uh, on Israel, and this was for the first time. Um, although the drones and ballistic missiles and were intercepted with Israeli's arrow system, and you know, uh, with the projectiles falling here and there. Uh, with the help of strategic partners. Uh, but to be very honest, sir, uh, this is a tactical response to Tehran did, um, which also reflects a new regional strategy. Now, uh, the options, as you talked about, sir, is more strategic in nature than tactical. We all know how uh, Tehran responds. Um, but at this point of time, as, as somebody who understands Tehran from that perspective, sir, I think uh, it is going to realign, reassess its regional strategy uh, with respect to the axis of resistance, um, which we all know is a coalition built around non-state violent groups to counter U.S. and Israeli influence. Uh, they are probably going to have aggressive maneuvers to counter Tel Aviv's interests uh, because killing of a strategic asset like Zahidi and the response that Tehran give, gave uh, yesterday was not something IRGC or Tehran had not predicted. Now. Uh, the vulnerabilities that Tehran currently faces, it's the sec second strategic asset that has been neutralized. Now, it, it is at a point of time where it needs to think whether sustaining influence in the proxies is important um, or like, for example, uh, the significance of embassy annexes. I mean, it's, it's very clear what the embassy annexes, such as a councillor yeah. facility, is used for. Yeah. So it's it's uh, for for IRGC uh, it needs to make more sustainable approach. It may make a sustainable approach to protect its commanders who play a pivotal role in not just expanding Iran. No, no. What yeah. you're saying is, Iran finds itself a little vulnerable 
because it's spread too much. Yes, sir, and it's a it's a it's a complex terrain. Uh, well, yeah, the IRGC commanders. Yeah, 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 wait, 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 wait. Let's go one by one. Don't take off. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Let's go one by one. So you find it. Yes, <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't know how you know uh, spread out. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. Second, it has its own vulnerabilities. It sir, will. it does. Sir, it does have. So in it this does. context. Uh, if it escalates the whole story, there are repercussions for it, or there are gains for it. Uh, no, that's very interesting, sir. Uh, were there repercussions after the loss of strategic assets such as Brigadier General Zahidi? Zahidi is just a name. Kasim Suleimani is just a name. Kasim Suleimani are in numbers. You can replicate Kasim Suleimani. So, killing of a strategic asset is a loss, absolutely. But we have learned from Tehran, sir, that the loss can be. Replaced. That can, yes, absolutely. So yeah, right, Zahidi, what will it do ahead? That's now the, the question is, right, sir. So um, there are hardliners in Tehran. Uh, with this, uh, there are hardliners. There are hardliners who said, okay, we uh, we call for a large scale retaliation, but Tehran is not going to go for it. Tehran has its own regional interest, which means that a large scale retaliation is against what Tehran expects or aims to achieve in the Middle East. It has already proved its ability to retaliate through this strike. It has, at some point of time, uh, in this, in this, I would say, through this act, it has silenced its hardliners. Now, the point is, does it aim to go something broader, or does it aim to, uh, let's say, uh, you know, uh, react in such a way that it undermines or the equation undermines the regional stability, um, or perhaps it prevents Israel from achieving its strategic goals? So the okay. idea that I think, so, sir, is Tehran is going to have a balanced strategy, sir. That is what okay. I aim to. Sir, you're going to have a balanced strategy. It is so have to have balance. Yeah, but escalation can't be ruled out. Uh, sir, uh, Tehran does not. Uh, the and, and I'm predicting on the basis of the trajectory of what situations yeah, are happening. Okay. Sir, so uh, it is not in the interest of Tehran to escalate. To escalate. Because okay. So that is right. Yeah, I I right. go with you. Let's. I I want to go. No, don't go into long explanations today. <laughs> yes, sir, then only we'll yes, move sir. ahead. Okay. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. What are Israel's options? Options, both. Um, sir, options for Israel is, uh, sir, they may go for uh, another Iranian IRGC commander. They but okay. they have known they they know that Te Tehran has already so, put up a strike. Yeah. So uh -huh. if what if so the question that I'm asking and the question that everybody is asking is. If Tel Aviv choose to strike, because that is the available option in front of uh, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu, and sir, let me let me also tell you, uh, it's it's an informed opinion, sir. Killing of Qasem Soleimani or killing of uh, 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 the Brigadier General uh, Zaidi, it it does not come from uh, a like say a small cabal of political leadership taking a call. It came from the Prime no, Minister a, himself. No, no, it's sir. a it's a very calculated. Strategy very calculated, yes. Easy. There's no doubt sir. about it. So, what sir. are the options going ahead? That's the point. Now, sir, now the logic. sir, don't look at sir. the logic. Tell me the options. Sir, Tel Aviv is going to strike now. The okay. Lord and and I'm as a, as a military commander, so you've, you've been in those shoes. The options that you have is you strike because uh, the Iran has the ability to reach to you, you have proved it, Iran has proved it that it can okay. strike. Now, the question is, sir, what if Tel Aviv strikes? If Tel Aviv does, what is going to happen? Sir, okay. Tehran is con going to continue, sir, to craft a balanced strategy. Now, when I say a balanced strategy... No, 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 means, don't go to balanced strategy. We'll come to that. Sir, don't, sir. You're running away. You're <laughs> running ahead of the clock. Okay. Sir, sir, sir. Right, so, sir. you sir. feel that Iran will have a balanced strategy it, it and will, Israel sir. will strike. Okay. It is okay. now, sir. This is this is estimation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is your estimation. Okay. Now this is my estimation. Put, this is my, put, my, <laughs> put some logic into the whole story. Sir, sir, sir. Right, sir. See, let me, and then you give me your comments. The first thing, sir. whatever has happened yesterday has happened. There is sir. no status quo ante. Neither sir. can Israel go back to its original thing, nor can Iran go back to its original framework of uh, conflict. Sir. That's sir. the first thing we have to understand. For the, so far, they've been hitting proxies or indirect. 
there's no direct yeah. contact between the two absolutely if you remember yeah. iran also fired in syria they fired at iraq and they fired even in pakistan because That they were is. getting covered. okay yeah. and they were handling uh, israel through the proxies yeah. the shia militias in yemen syria iraq or uh, hezbollah and all that there's no direct contact israel also yeah. avoided it israel was also firing in syria damascus hezbollah or things like that or right. old, go back a little assassinations this is the first time even this assassination of or the killing of zahedi was in damascus not direct yeah. indirect right. israel uh, iran has come direct okay now it's a direct fight and okay all all curtains are away yes sir yes sir the question let's start from israel has israel been taught a lesson my answer is yes and no yes israel has been taught the lesson that iran can retaliate and there'll be a, there's a likelihood of mass retaliation right sir okay there's a like whatever it does the likelihood of a mass retaliation is there it has also been taught a lesson that look this mass retaliation i can parry i can get out sure. what sure. if israel hypes this attack up or gets a bigger mass in something will go in which will hurt it, israel so that's the yes and no part of israel has israel learned that lesson that's a question mark now let's flip the question has uh, iran learned a lesson uh, yes or no again iran has now learned the lesson that whatever it does there are limits to what it can do uh, that the other yes, side sir. can parry it out yes sir okay so sure. sure. the second that's the yes part of it that would have sunk it that is where what you say comes in strategic balance yeah. they will attain try and attain strategic balance yeah. okay they also now had the bragging rights look we have retaliated yeah, the hardliners have been uh, satisfied that we know how to retaliate. Yeah, but have they learned the lesson that they cannot be as effective that is the question have they learned the lesson if they do something else they might bring usa and uk and even Saudi Arabia and UAE into this war have they learned that so if you see i think yesterday is both have learned some lesson and both have not learned some lesson or rather they have taken some issues to ponder on yeah certainly certainly fair. okay so fair. and one thing is clear yeah any miscalculation on the part of either israel or on the part of uh, iran will lead to a wider conflagration and that is something which both wanted to avoid from the start um, okay and right. what about the other actors they also wouldn't like to get drawn into this no one would like to get drawn into this neither okay. saudi arabia nor uae nor us because then if that happens that axis of resistance might kick in and then you might find Russia and China also getting into the equation and then it leads to a major major then you're looking at world war 3 scenario that's the danger where we are standing the question is will israel pull back will uh, iran pull back or hold fire when i say pull back you know hold your horses and what would be the next Thing because the repercussions if you do one either so just give me a thing quickly in the next two three minutes on this where do you think this uh, is going we will uh, see the logic and all that where do you think it's uh, going sir uh, to be very honest uh, irgc is going to go for an indirect option now this is i am explicitly saying when tel aviv chooses to fight and uh their indirect option is not only going to be involving hezbollah pij and hamas um, uh, uh, factions in the region but also to influence through influence and propaganda which is essentially to undermine tel aviv's interest now i said so this is an addition to what my assessment is irgc is going to renew its intelligence footprint in syria iraq 
Yemen, Lebanon, which also means that they've got a, a concept of deterrent strategy um, that they will be implementing in these areas without facing the Israeli conventional military. Now, this is something that, uh, sir, this is, this is, all of these are pointing in that direction, sir. Uh, which also means that, sir, Tehran may also open doors of greater engagement with its potential allies. So now at this point of time, Tehran is back, is, is going to reach to its axis of resistance and additional allies, Russia, which is going to Russia, come up in play. So you're talking about Russia and China? Russia and China, sir. And yes. will it go to Pakistan also? Uh, sir, it's highly unlikely, sir. Okay. It's highly so unlikely. You, I, in my assessment, sir, I don't predict Pakistan anywhere in this equation. Sir. Okay, so Pakistan, you don't find. So it might reach to Russia and China. Okay, yes, let me sir. ask you the flip question. Will Russia and China are likely to get will are likely to get involved with Iran in this? Uh, sir, Moscow is going to provide material support. Uh, okay. This is this is it has been done. Now it's an open door opportunity for China. What China did with Saudi Arabia and Iran. China is going to come up with flags of peace and tranquility yeah, and prosperity. Also, also that, that's, that is going to be their play, sir. That's all. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. the stakes for China are high because their energy dependency on this area is very high. They very high. They have to play the game absolutely in the middle. Russia yeah. might come, but Russia finds itself stuck with uh, Ukraine. After all, there's a pressure there also. I mean, let's not forget yeah. to wish that away. <laughs> so, yeah. so the the stakes. So Iran might end it, end up fighting alone. That's the thing, so, right? It might, uh, not, might not get yeah. too much help. You know, leave uh, narrative narrative out because we are not talking so, so. hard war. So, so. Next step will be hard war. That's the point. Right, so. Okay, so, narrative so. won't help. So now let's look at Israel. Do you think Israel will? Go ahead. You said earlier, Israel will go and strike Iran. So how so, will Israel do? Will that will they get back to the indirect form of uh, thing, or will there be a direct? I so said it's going to go back to indirect, sir. That's right. It's going so to go you, back to indirect. Sir. Indirect. So yes, sir. Israel will go back to the indirect form of attacking. Uh, yes, Iran, sir. Right. Yes, sir. They'll avoid being direct with each other. Confrontation, sir. Plan, right. The direct. So, are Iran's nuclear assets at risk? Uh, sir, Iran is at a, as I said, sir, it's at a crossroad. Not only per se with the strategic asset, but also uh, it has proven, it has demonstrated that you, if you want to do a peace deal, if you want to have a peace negotiation, if you want to rescue the hostages, you can't do it without Iran. Now, if Iran is being offered, a, let's say hypothetically, so it's a hypothesis, if Iran is being placed, is offered to sit on a seat of negotiation table, then sir, the nuclear program is going to come in place. Okay. So, everything is up for grabs at this point of time. Things sir. are not clear. Uh, why I'm telling you this, everyone who's sir. listening is this. Uh, when you look at the commentary from Israel, you see it across yeah. the entire spectrum. There is one lot yeah. who says go in for a retaliation. There is one yeah. lot who says pull back and see how you can mend fences. We don't know yeah. what Iran is thinking because nothing has come out. And from whatever Iran has given out statements so far, it says, look, we've done the demonstration. Now we are happy with what it is. Right? Yeah. Like you rightly said, Iran might not escalate the situation directly. But Israel is completely in it. The reason being why yeah. we shouldn't rule out direct action against uh, Iran is this. Yeah. Iran, Israel has been playing this indirect role and indirect attack against uh, Iran for far too long. Right? Israel might be thinking this is my chance to hit it directly. And yeah. no, if an indirect approach to me happens, there will be direct consequences. So we're going to see, in my opinion, both will be assessing the, the option of going direct versus indirect. Sure. So an uh, indirect option might invite direct responses. A direct response might in, uh, my, or a direct action might invite an indirect response. Indirect response. So all, sure. yeah, all four are on the thing. A direct direct is on the uh, cards. Indirect and indirect responses on the card, 
and the crisscrossing is also on the card. That's the way I look at it. Yeah. Sir. You have any comments on this? Two minutes. No, no, sir. You, you're absolutely right. And uh, this time, in, uh, Iran is going to be focusing much on diplomacy, sir. So it's going to be a mix of. This is what what I uh, again, sir. This is what I predict, sir. Uh, Iran is going to come. Is it's probably going to go to the UN. It has already reached out to UN. It's going to try and humiliate uh, Tel Aviv at any point of time it comes at diplomatic levels, more importantly. So, sir, there's a mix of a, a mix of tactics of of, of diplomacy and uh, uh, some response. So, the the brunt of the response is going to be dealt in Gaza, sir. So, you will okay. see the impact uh, to be felt in Gaza, sir. So, Look, uh, but Gaza is actually why this direct response and direct thing. Gaza is out of the equation at this point of time. Sir. So, yes, I understand, sir. I mean, you're you're very right, sir. But uh, sir, uh, the I would say the response that Tehran did, it's not going to go. Uh, it, it's it's it doesn't it doesn't finishes at that end, sir. It okay. probably I think it starts there, sir. Okay, fine. So you're you're saying that yeah, what you're saying is logic from. Iran's point of view, the idea is not an immediate response. The idea is not uh, this thing. Pull back, hold back, and you know, get back to Israel through Gaza, humanitarian conditions inside the Islamic world and all that. And from yeah. the Israel point of view, they would like to avoid it and go direct yeah. so that the Gaza is taken out of the equation and hereafter the talk is between Israel and uh, you know, Iran. So yeah. I think overall it's a very nebulous kind of a situation. So we'll leave it at that, and we'll see how it yeah. pans out. Because any miscalculation in this kind of a scenario means a, yeah. a larger conflagration.